weeks ago, just after the Newtown, Connecticut school shooting. I heard gunshots right outside of my house. I found myself in the bathroom with my son and my cell phone, hiding away, much like the teacher I had seen on the media, hiding away with her students. Fear had washed over me. It turned out that it was a neighbor shooting target practice. People have been shooting a lot more recently with everything that's going on. He was within his rights. He was within the laws. We're outside of the city limits. He was a safe distance from his neighbors. The sheriff told me though, it's okay ma'am, it's understandable considering everything that's happened recently. But in the four minutes it took for him to get there after I finally called 911 in my fearful stupor, I realized that calling the sheriff isn't what needed to be done. I needed to get prepared. Last time they did it, it was up over there. Okay. All right, don't be too obvious with the camera. <laughs> I don't want them to like arrest us for filming. Okay, let's stop it then. Dun dun dun! We have a camera. Ah, uh, the concealed weapons class. Do I need that? I keep going back and forth on it. Well, by the end of this movie, I will definitely have made up my mind. It's available at your local gun range or the gun show. Just take your guns. Let's hang on to that one, huh? So you said they've gone up in price? Yeah, they've gone up in price, yeah. Like, how much was this a couple months ago? How much is it now? I'd say they almost doubled. Since all the... Since the shit, yeah. Yeah. Right. And the, talking about the ban and everything. But this is not automatic, right? It's semi-automatic. It's sem so someone would have to change the gun to make it like a crazy machine well, gun style thing. Can't, um, if these can't be changed. They're only semi-automatic. Um, so that's like a myth? Yeah. Full auto you, is a whole different um, realm. You have to be a certain dealer. You have to get a tax stamp. You have to do a certain background check. What about criminals, though? A criminal would they? Class three, yeah. Class so three. could a criminal do that? Sure, a well, criminal. He gets anything he wants underground. I mean, he do they have the, you know, right. Okay. get assessed under the right connections. They're going to leave oh, all the way through it. So they can like, get their guns back. no matter what. Yeah, right, exactly. So if a criminal, so if, you know, if I can't get one of these, the criminal can still get one. He can still change it to an automatic. Well, I don't have these, a hope against these, them, right? These aren't, you can, there's certain guns you can't. These these are not, you can't change these into some automatic. Okay. There's, I mean, I need full auto. That's not what Pierce Morgan says, yeah. though. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, so I agree with true. you on that. So, yeah. okay. Well, it's good to see that they're still out there and available because... Make sure you shoot a gun before you buy it, because like a hammer, or if you get a hammerless revolver, you don't have a hammer on it. You're not going to have time to pull that back if you're in a confrontation within 15 feet. You're okay. going to just have to pull that gun up and shoot it. Well, the trigger pull is so long on it that for me, I'll pull to the right or to the left okay. when I go to pull, because it's so long. It's so much. It's, it's heavy. We should get a Glock then. I already have a Glock. This is a Glock uh, 36, you can see right there, it's a 45 automatic. That, this is a, a subcompact, they're, they're subcompact size. I actually thought this would be pretty good because this might fit in your hand pretty well. And just watch out for the... Yeah. So it is smooth, like she said, it's not yes. going to catch my purse. Okay, and I'm supposed to hold it like this, right? For pretty, safety. I'm pretty certain, yes. But this so still has a slide, good. like our yeah. SIG. Yeah, it's a semi-automatic gun. Feel free to pick up anything you want to look at. Thank you so much. Um, can I slide it or is that going to mess the gun up? Well, you can be able to slide it except look at that zip tie on top. I think that's oh, preventing I you from see. racking. Okay, slide. good. So. But is this going to be just about as hard as our six hour to slide? And that's something we need to actually get one on our hands that we can slide back on there. And that's 560, so that's a little more than I want. I think we're going to take this lady's recommendation, and maybe go rent a gun at the gun range. I'm okay. sure he would find us videotaping.
here are some shotguns, and this is the number one home defense gun. Um, the shotguns, as far as that goes, like from two to four in the morning, it's the best time to use a shotgun because you're going to be groggy eyed. You're not going to be able to see to shoot. So you pull out your shotgun as soon as you know it's somebody that's intruding. Normally, right. you're going to know it's not your kids. So you're going to be able to shoot in that direction, and you're going to hit them at least with something because the shotgun shell goes in it's spray. So if they're not hit with the main portion, they're at least hit with some of the spray. And it's loud, too. So it's loud. It scares anybody else. I mean, when you just cock that thing, anybody in their right mind is going to leave. Right. Because okay. it's so deafening. Which of these shotguns could I handle as a 140-pound female who can do a good number of push-ups, but I'm not, you know, the strongest person in the world? This is the Mossberg 500. Okay. This is kind of a, a, a very well-known name as far as home defense is concerned. And it's 500? It's 299. Oh. What's the, the five? That's the model number. Oh, the model number. Oh, okay. So 299 is in our price range. That is in our price range. Okay. <laughs> So that's something to consider, but we're going to go to the gun range and check out the different types of guns before we buy one. Is that yeah, I think so. So does the gun, the gun range isn't going to let me shoot a shotgun though, is it? I want to buy a gun to protect my home, but I don't want to buy it blind. I want to know how to safely use it. What class can I take? I don't think I need a concealed weapons permit, but I still, I, you know, I want to know, I want to be prepared. I don't want to just be fumbling around with a dangerous I do weapon. I would suggest that you take the concealed weapons class, that you can get all the safety issues in that class. Okay, so now we're going to move to Texas in a couple of months, so... Should I wait and take a class in each individual state? Or, so, in, you know what I'm saying? Like, is this a state to state thing? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. Here's okay. an interesting fact about concealed weapons permits. If you live in a state such as my current state, Florida, and you have a concealed weapons permit, or you're interested in getting one, but you know you're going to be changing your residence to a different state, you may be able to transfer that permit through what are called handshake states, such as Texas and Florida. No, I just wanted to add to what Larry said was that I highly recommend you to take a self-defense class. Okay. No matter what state you're in, because it familiarizes you with the weapon use, and it gives you the confidence of when you do have to use it in an emergency or any situation, the self-defense prepares you mentally, emotionally, and, and, and just how to operate the weapon. Okay, so how much are the 9 millimeter bullets? Uh, these are 25. So how much were they a couple of months ago? No, you're right. Were they how much less? were they a couple months ago? They were less. They were a lot less. So, so ammo is going up in price. Yes, yes, ammo is going up because it's about like gold nowadays. You can't find it. Even Walmart, they don't have no ammo. Okay, right. I've heard that Walmart's refusing to restock their ammo. Yes. Do you guys have any nine millimeter bullets? I yeah, mean, they're hard to get. There's almost nothing in here. And I think we did see one one package, but they were like a lot more expensive than they. Everything's <laughs> hard. These are so these are nine millimeters in there. Thirty-five a box. Well, thirty. Thirty a box. Fifty. Four boxes for a hundred. Okay, and that's two hundred rounds. Two for fifty-five. Okay. And you pretty, this is what's left. Yeah, okay. They're going fast. You sold out of hollow point yesterday. Okay. I was just noticing a lot of people are selling out of ammo. The gun prices have gone up really high. Were, were there a lot of people coming to this gun show yes. this time? Yes, it's been record sales for the last couple months. It has, and so I noticed one gentleman was just upset with you because he couldn't find what was the ammo he was looking no, for. No, he was just saying across the board, but he didn't show up till 3.30 this afternoon, and we closed at 4. For a female, right. 38's plenty, and there's plenty of 38's in there. Okay, yeah, see, yeah. I was looking at 9mm because that's what my husband has, and I thought, 
we could get the same bullets, but those are just flying off well, the, the shelf. Well, the thing is, can you handle a nine millimeter? That's something I'm going to learn from you through need, this whole process. You need to go to a gun range that rents firearms that you can try different firearms. And that's where we're having right now. Thank you so much. Thank you. For the Thank information. You. All right, you too. So when that incident that I was talking about happened, I was afraid to get our gun because we hadn't used it in so long, and I was afraid it would jam. I would recommend peri periodically checking it if you're not firing it. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say every every month or so you want to take it apart, clean it, uh, put a light coat of oil on it, make sure everything's still functional, do a function check. Uh, and a function check is just making sure it can slide. Making sure it can it can that everything's moving, all the moving parts are moving, all the parts that aren't supposed to be moving are being still. Okay. Uh, that's that's basically it. Know your weapon. Uh, if you fire it, I recommend cleaning it. Uh, okay. anytime, anytime you shoot afterwards, you want to clean it. And, and this is whether it's a pistol or a revolver or any anything. any firearm you're shooting. Okay, so that gun that you know was sitting there for a year, as long as we had cleaned it and oiled it after we had shot it last, it should it be should fine. It should still be good as long as you're keeping it in a dry place. Okay. So I'm going, I think I like this one because um, it's the same size bullets as a pistol we already have. And I seem to be able to rack the slide easily. I'm left-handed and it has this ambidextrous magazine release. release. Okay. So he's going to give me the sequence of fire. Thank you so much. Empty chamber. Gun's not loaded. We're using dummy rounds. There's three dummy rounds in the magazine. Magazine goes in the firearm. Left slide. Okay. It is loaded. You can tell it's loaded and it's hot and cocked by the little red dot poking out in the back. Right? Okay. Little safety feature that Smith and Wesson and Walter built into these particular firearms. When you fire the gun, you're going to pull the trigger to press it all the way to the rear. When it shoots, it will actually slide back. It will eject the spent case. It'll automatically fired. do that. Okay. It'll do this on its own. As the slide comes back into the forward position, it's going to strip the top round off the magazine, inserting it to the chamber of the firearm. Release the trigger, fire again, happens again. Okay, so I'm not going to have to rack the slide. It's going to automatically do that. You're only going to have to rack the slide to load the initial cartridge. Okay, and then, but it is going to spit those shells out each time. And Every that's... time you pull the trigger. Okay. Until the last one. The last one is going to come back. The follower of the magazine, that little white plastic piece that you're seeing there, pushes a lever inside, which actuates your slide lock. Okay, and I know it's open reload. like that. I better release my magazine. Time to reload. And... Okay, and reload. Thank you. I think I want to try to shoot that. So, okay, so here is the safety rules and regulations. They have some very specific rules and regulations that need to be followed. They're not just letting people run in to the range and while out and pistol each other. Um, and then I'm required to read through those. I'm required to read through all of this and sign it. This is a liability, but it's also a lot of safety issues going on here. It's just there's a lot of misconceptions out there about gun owners or people who enjoy shooting guns and how reckless they are. This is a really safe environment. They've got, you know, people in there shooting, but it's not a mismanaged type of situation. These people are practicing and this is their duty. Okay. 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 Okay.
I need to know how to aim that gun and fire. So I found out today that I am right eye dominant. I found out the difference between the front and the rear sight, which seems really simple, but it's so important. And uh, I got a membership to Jay's gun range. I'm getting this because I was in that situation where I heard gunshots outside of my house. I was home alone with my kid and I realized not until I was in that moment, but I did realize calling the sheriff isn't always the best thing to do because they're the ones that get called out, you know, and get there five minutes later. And I'm sure they would rather get there and see that the situation has been taken care of by a responsible adult than see that a murder or a burglary has already occurred. Okay, so we just went into the Walmart to once again look for some 9mm bullets, and they're sold out. And the gentleman at the counter, Johnny, um, I asked him about the rumor of, is Walmart refusing to reorder these bullets? And he said that that is absolutely untrue, that they cannot get the bullets, that the manufacturers cannot keep up with the demand. The gun range in my town is also out of ammo and we've been unable to get some bullets from them for the last week. So now we're gonna head over to another local corporate type store and see if they have anything for us. All I'm trying to do folks, I'm not trying to hoard the ammo. I'm just simply trying to get my hands on some full metal jacket, nine millimeter bullets to practice with the pistol that we already have. We did make it to the other store and they were also out of nine millimeter ammunition. And they told us the same thing that the Walmart em employee told us, which was they couldn't get any from the manufacturers. So the rumor about Walmart refusing to stock them, I believe is untrue. And from my research, it's probably more to do with the Department of Homeland Security. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is January 4th, 2013. And here's a quick look at what's coming up. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, the Department of Homeland Security bought even more ammunition to add to their high-capacity magazines and staggering pile of 1.6 billion rounds. Plus, David Knight takes a look back at the major battles for the Bill of Rights. Then, hammers have claimed the lives of more Americans than rifles, as handymen freely roam the streets of America. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. All right, folks, so since this video, a lot of it has to do with me trying to encourage people about gun safety, I want to show you this typical gun safe. This is a full size, not a tiny one like my husband and I have, but if you have rifles or shotguns, you're going to want one of these. And you also might want to bolt it to your wall so that anyone can't come in and steal your entire safe. And in here, I don't know if you notice, there's an AR-15 and uh, my source who is gracious enough to let me video his safe may let me shoot this AR-15 and of course I will get footage for all of you to see. Okay, I'm this is your AR-15. This is the gun that's getting such a bad rap, folks. This is not an automatic weapon and I'm going to show you how I know. If this were an automatic weapon, it would say safe, fire, and auto. As you can see, there's nothing there. Now this is a semi-automatic weapon, but so are a lot of other guns that you might buy, such as the P99 that I was shooting at the range the other day. Now there is, there are a couple of modifications that can be done to this gun. One of them is a mechanical difference that can be done to the back of the gun here. It's called a bump fire stock, so that when you fire the gun, your, your fingers on the trigger, it's going to put like a spring almost into this part of the gun so that you literally can fire faster. That is a completely legal modification that can be done to this gun. Now there is another modification that can be done which is going to change another part of the gun that would make it fully automatic. That is an illegal modification of this gun. Now as far as Sandy Hook and Adam Lanza and whether or not he used this gun, 
I personally cannot confirm whether he did or did not, but I saw a video of the police pulling what looked like this gun out of his locked trunk. Now that, to me, indicates that he did not use this weapon in the actual shooting, so you have to ask yourself, why is the media making it out to be that he did? Why has no surveillance footage been released from the Sandy Hook shooting showing Adam Lanza blasting away with an AR-15? The article then uh, hints that quite possibly uh, news reports say that Adam Lanza, news reports were saying that maybe an AR-15 was not used and handguns were used. They say now that uh, there were actually four handguns uh, recovered inside the school, not just two, as we were initially told. Four handguns, and apparently only handguns, that were taken into the school. We knew that uh, Adam Lanza, the man said to be the gunman here, also had a assault-style, AR-15-style rifle that he had taken to the school that was in the car he drove there, his mother's car. But we've been told by several officials that he left that in the car. So what Mike Adams is saying here is the reason why they haven't released the footage is because you might see in the footage that handguns were used as opposed to the AR-15, and that would debunk their argument that assault that an assault weapon was responsible for this and that we need a ban on assault weapons. Not to say by any means that I'm not completely sorry for the families that lost their children and the faculty and staff of that tragedy. But is it accurate information that we got? I am not so certain. So there's some new information on the AR-15. I really hope I get to shoot this in the next couple of weeks and you'll get to see it. Okay guys, I just wanna give you a little more gun education. This AR-15 right here, um, like I said, is a semi-automatic, much like other semi-automatics. And for example, this clip is a 12 round clip that goes with the AR-15. Now you can buy larger clips okay, like the big infamous drums or a 15 or whatever round clip. But that P99, I was shooting at the gun range the other day, there was a 15 round clip for that, and that's a pistol. So also, just to point out, this AR-15 is not designed for a close range shot. This is designed to shoot things farther away. I'm going to show you all these different rounds. This is a 22 cal, the infamous 9 millimeter that I can't find in stores. Here's your hollow point and your slug of the 38 special. And then here's your 357. And this is your AR15 round, AR15 round, the point 223. Now this does have more power, but it's not designed to do more damage to humans or whatever the media is perpetrating. This round is designed to shoot things that are farther away. Okay? So, um I'm not saying that an insane person isn't going to misuse this weapon, but what I'm saying is that this weapon isn't designed for things like that. You know, this bullet here is meant to shoot things farther away, and it does have more powder behind it, but it's narrow. If you're shooting someone at a close range with this .223 versus this 9mm, which is a lot fatter, which one's going to do more damage? Honestly, folks, the 9mm. And I think, you know, as I realized that, that's why these 9 millimeters are probably selling out because they're buying it not because they're crazy psychopaths, but because they're doing this for home defense, okay? So just remember that, you know, this is going to do more damage uh, for somebody that is close range to you. All right, guys. So let's just say hypothetically I can't get my hands on any 9mm bullets to defend my home in the next month or two before the manufacturers catch up with all this demand. Or perhaps there's some other reason that you all may be concerned about. This right here will scare the pants off of anybody trying to get into your home. 
You can put four rounds here in the barrel and an extra one right here. That's five rounds. After I almost bought that P99, I realized that with some dummy bullets, I could go home and practice with the Sig Sauer P6 that we already had. So I didn't even need to buy a gun. I just needed a little bit of education now, on how to use it. So for my second range experience, I brought okay. our gun. Now. And this time, I knew how to rack the slide. Okay, so it's not that I'm weak. Correct. Now I'm going to pop this in. Pull it back cool. and lock open. Yep. Good. Okay, so I am strong enough to do it. Now you're saying I can just yank, I can do like this and it'll, I don't have to push that button. Correct. Whenever you insert a little magazine into it, you'll be able to just pull it back. But with an empty magazine, you have to remove it. Okay. Should I use my thumb? See, being lefty is weird. But... Yeah. Nice. I know. Now I can just do exactly. that. I'm getting it. There you go. Okay. Before I practice with our boring old Sig Sauer, why not shoot a machine pistol? Here we have safety, it's safe, single shot, triple shot, three, four, three round burst, and then we have full auto. Okay, so this is fully automatic, this is not an AR-15. This and is also suppressed. What does that mean? Um, it's got a built-on suppressor to it. AR in AR-15, despite what you all may think, does not stand for automatic rifle. AR actually stands for... Armalite. It's a company that, that produces weapons. Armalite, which is the company, not automatic rifle or assault rifle or any of that. Now, today, I am excited to find that I am going to get to shoot an automatic weapon. And yes, I am excited. It is going to be fun. I am going to do it in a safe environment, in a gun range. And this gentleman named Matt, Matt is going to help me with it. Thank you so much, Matt. Not a problem. Okay, what is that? That is a suppressor. Okay, now what does a suppressor do? I know. Right? <laughs> I do not recommend that. I'm, this is, I'm going to see myself on CNN here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so what is a suppressor? I don't understand. What it that. will, it muffles the sound of a gunshot. Now, you're going to have to fully instruct well, me on how to use this. Okay, this is a what now? HK MP5 SD. And I am really excited. Okay, folks, I just want to point out that I looked all over the other day to find ammunition, and I couldn't find any. And finally, Jay's gun range in Panama City, they did get some in. I am going to shoot today. They are going to set me up with this automatic rifle as well, so I'm going to see uh, how much fun it is to shoot that. I'm going to practice with our home defense weapon. But we finally found some. It's $30 for 50 so that's where the price is at i don't know if any of you are familiar with what they were a few months ago but i just wanted to point that out and we are getting plenty and these ear things are great yeah So how many feet away is that? Uh, that's probably about 25 feet right there. Okay. All right. What's going to happen with this? Right now that your bolt's locked open, so you will insert your magazine in, and you will lock it in. And then so do I have to kind of, like yep, with the gonna, other gun? Okay. Correct. You're going to pop it in. And then this here is your uh, charging handle. So you kind of come over the gun and slap that down. Okay. This whole thing is the charging handle. This portion right here. Yeah, okay. that's your charge again. Okay. And that's what moves your bolt back to load your round. And I'm going to hold it against my shoulder like that. Okay. Yep. Um, we'll get to that also here in a second. It'll be like that, locked open, come over, and chop it down. Okay, and that means it's ready to go? There'll be a round in the chamber at that point. Okay. Whenever you get the gun, the safety's going to be on. Okay. And what we kind of recommend is that you go to single shot just so you can get an idea of what's going to happen with a gun and whenever we start going full auto it doesn't uh doesn't surprise you right from there do a few rounds semi-automatic then come and flip up to your three round burst hold your magazine in it's called snap come over and chop go to semi-automatic
Okay, so that last one was the automatic one. Correct. And it wasn't bouncing around that much, so because you're really stabilizing it against your shoulder. If you control the gun, then we're empty and safe right there. Okay, good. As, as long as you're holding the gun correctly, you're gonna be able to do that. Okay. All right, remember how I told you? Yes. You have to put the gun into your shoulder first. Wide stance, nose right Just like that. Take and this in your right hand. Right here. Nope, right oh, there. Oh. Yep. Hard. Snap, pop, yep, you're locked in. Oh, it's locked in, okay. Squeeze straight back. Okay, just like that. Okay. How am I doing? You're doing good. Okay. All right, go with the clear on first, please. Now, like I said, you're going to hold that trigger to the brim. Yeah, three rounds go. Pretty good shooting for a girl. I know, right? It's not bad. Release the trigger. Two rounds, release the hold trigger. Hold it, release, hold it, release. Okay. Correct. Does she always talk this much? Oh, dear God. Keep going. Oh, wow. Did I, so I did pretty good, right? Absolutely. Uh -huh. Oh, my For God. First time shooting a sub gun, that's pretty good. <laughs> there you go. Not bad. your shoulder so it's easier to aim that I had so much improvement just from going two times that now if something were to happen tomorrow okay if someone started banging on my door I looked out the window I don't know who it is they start trying to pick the lock I'm comfortable enough that I will be able to protect my son if I'm here by myself. A few weeks ago, when I heard bullets outside of my house, I took my son, I hid in the bathroom. I didn't even know how to check to see if it was fully unloaded or loaded at that point. But now I'm prepared if something were to happen tomorrow. You had the gun and then you saw the door handle turning and what did you do i shot the gun through the door i didn't have a choice i 
felt like I had to do it, and if I didn't do it, I wouldn't be here. I just want to say one thing. As a female, okay, if any of you are females and, and you're watching this right now, if you've ever been assaulted, whether it be someone take your purse or domestic abuse, sexual assault, whatever it may be, it is so important to get your power back. It is so important to understand not only that it's not your fault, okay, but that there is something that you can do to prevent it from happening again. And not only to prevent it from happening to you, but if you can stand up to somebody like that, if it's necessary, then it could prevent it from happening to somebody else down the line. What do you make of what your daughter did? I think that my daughter's a hero, and I think that she saved her own life that day, and I think that she saved the life of someone else down the line. You injured him. You did save your life, and uh, you probably saved somebody else's life, because chances are he's not going to be doing this again. Newtown, Connecticut was a tragedy that breaks my heart. And part of the reason I was cowering in that bathroom with my son is because I had seen the media footage of the teacher who was hiding in the bathroom with all these students. And so when I heard those bullets, the fear overcame me. That fear is leaving me. One person at Newtown, just one person had a gun in there, locked in their desk, or if there was one armed guard there, how many children's lives would have been saved? Guns can take lives. Guns can save lives, too. Guns can stop horrible things from happening. That's why our police carry them. That's why our military trains with them. I am at the point now where not only do I believe that it is our Second Amendment right, I believe it is our duty as citizens. I will not hide in a bathroom again without my pistol at my side. You and in preparation of using that weapon properly in a situation. So would that be the thing where I would literally have my own gun and take it to the class and they would... They recommend you to bring your own weapon and some... Settle down, settle down, take your time, no rush. Hard to focus on that. Okay, front sight. Pop your mag, make the gun safe, bench the gun. Oh, um, and my question is, you know, because I do have a small child at home, we have, now we have a, a little gun safe with a right. finger pad or whatever, and what we've been doing is we'll keep the magazine loaded, but not in the gun, in the safe. Okay. Um, which, and, you know, I hear people argue all the time, like, what if someone's coming in, you don't have time, and to me, I'm like, well, I told my husband he couldn't get a gun unless he got a safe, so... I mean, you, you have to find a level of what you're comfortable with. <clears throat> you have to keep in mind that if something does happen, you're going to be under a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the likelihood of you being able to access the safe, get the gun out of the safe, get the magazine out of the safe, put them together, and make them a working, functioning unit right. when somebody's breaking into your home? Um, but at the same time, you got to balance how comfortable you are with the gun in its particular state of being with your child around. Right. You know, so mm -hmm. somewhere there, there is a balance. Maybe the balance would be the magazine is in the gun loaded, but there's not a round chamber. And then that gun is inside your quick access safe. So I don't have to unlock the safe and put the magazine in right. and rack the slide. I can literally the safe, just... grab the gun, rack the slide, you're good to go. Okay. Um, your child is probably not, I mean, you've racked the slide on your gun how many times today? I don't know, at least 20 or so yeah. times. Yeah. Do you have an idea that your six-year-old is strong enough to do that same? No. 
function? He's not. There's so, no way. So, you know, it's just to find a, a balance of, of this, your comfort with safety along with your comfort of being able to use a firearm in self-defense. Somewhere in the middle, there's a ground that's, gonna, that's going to work for both. Safe storage of a firearm means storing it to where it is not accessible by unauthorized persons. Okay. That and means that somebody that's not supposed to have access to it can't get access to it. Every individual situation is different. Whether you have kids at home or you don't, whether you live at home alone or you don't, whether you have roommates or you don't, everybody's situation is different and it's all a personal, that, that comfort is only in. It's right. how you, what you dictate a safe storage of the fire. We are on our way to Apalachicola National Forest today. It is a beautiful day. We planned this three weeks ahead and the weather could not have been better. We are going to shoot a Winchester 308 lever action rifle. We're going to shoot an AR-15 223 with 223 ammo. And we're going to also shoot my, uh, my and my husband's Sig Sauer P6 and I'm gonna show off everything that I learned in the NRA First Steps class that I took this past Friday. Okay, anytime, anytime someone hands you a weapon, the first thing they should hand it to you in a safe position, which is gonna be like this, with the magazine out. The first thing you're gonna do is clear the weapon 180 degrees. Always point it in a safe direction, number one. Number two, keep your finger off the trigger. And then number three, I forgot number three. First three rules of safety. Number one. Always keep your firearm pointed in the safest direction possible. There is no safe direction. Number two, keep your finger off the trigger until you are aimed and ready to shoot. Number three, keep your firearm unloaded until ready for use. This may be active use or passive use. Okay, so to clear the weapon, we just are gonna look in the front chamber, down, and in the back. You can stick your pinky in there and make it. This is not a slide release. So I'm just going to back. In order to load the weapon, this is unloaded at the moment. You're always going to hold it as if you're ready to fight. So I'm holding it in my left hand. After you load it, you're going to pop in. Well, it's held back right now because yeah. Decocking is going to make it harder to pull the trigger. And then you're going to, once you've wrapped the slide, it's in there. Now let's just say there's bullets in there. And I want to unload it and I want to clear the gun. The first thing you do is release the magazine. That's the first thing you do. If you were to rack the slide first, you would pull the round into the chamber. Notice those three identical targets? Imagine that is a group of people. Part of what I learned in the NRA First Steps class was how to aim with both eyes open. Now, because I am left-handed and right-eye dominant, also known as cross-eye dominant, I will see literally two targets for every one. And I've learned that I should aim for the right target. Now I see six targets instead of two. The one farthest, uh, the one right in the middle is the one you want. Did you see that? A hot spent case landed in my eyewear. So I pointed my weapon in a very unsafe direction. Had my weapon been hot and not clear, someone could have been killed.
there's a big difference between aiming at the gun range for one target and aiming in a crowd of people or in the middle of three identical targets. Remember this if you're ever in a crowded mall, such as the Clackamas Mall shooting, where a concealed weapons holder drew his gun, aimed, and thankfully decided not to fire. On the shooting at Clackamas Town Center, we now know there was another armed man in the mall that day, a shopper who had the shooter in his gun sight, but never pulled the trigger. In my mind, I kept saying, like, drop it, drop the gun, you know? And when I drew up, I got tunnel vision, and all I saw was my front sight on his head, and I was, I was indexing, and as I was going down, I was going to pull. I saw someone in the back of the Charlotte move, and I knew that if I fired and missed, I could end up hitting them. So Mealy took cover inside a nearby store. He never did pull the trigger. And he stands by that decision. I'm not beating myself up because I didn't shoot him. But I know that after he saw me, the, I think the last shot he fired was the one that he used on himself. The gunman was dead, but not before taking two innocent lives with him. And as Mealy points out, taking the innocence of everyone else. I don't ever want to have to see anyone that way ever. It just it bothers me, you know. couple of months since that first incident, I've shot a lot of different guns. I've learned a lot. And one thing that's become abundantly clear to me is that if I'm going to be using a gun to defend myself, there is a possibility that someone may die. It may be a necessity or it may be an incidental in the act of defense against an attacker. But if you're not ready for a human life to be taken, you don't need to be using a firearm that has a deadly force. So how do I deal with this with the issue of morality? Well, I look to the Bible. And this is what I found. Exodus chapter 21, verse 14. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, thou shalt take him from mine altar, that he may die. 